Okay, let's prove that this language is not regular. So it's the set of all strings that are composed only of zeros, and they have a factorial number of zeros. So zero factorial is one, so, well, it's defined to be one. So we would have exactly one zero in here. If n is one, we would have one zero again. If n is two, then this would be two zeros. If n is three, this would be six zeros. If n is four, that'd be 24 zeros, etc. So I wanna show that this thing is not regular. So let's suppose that it were regular. Suppose it were regular. Then that means that there exists a pumping constant P for L. Exists a P for this language L. Okay. So then now we wanna pick a string that's in the language and has length at least P. Well, <laughs> that's no problem. So let's choose w to be equal to zero to the p factorial. So commonly the technique is to substitute the p for the exponent, the n, not the whole exponent, the n part. And clearly this is in the language because we defined it, uh, the number p, and, th and this is quantified over all n, so therefore p is in there. Well, p factorial is in here. And p factorial is at least p. So let's think. Well. Those small values, um, zero factorial is one, the factorial wins. One factorial equals one, the factorial is equal or larger, and that's fine. Two factorial is equal to two, the factorial is equal. Three factorial is six, so the factorial wins. And then factorial just keeps going up and up and up after that. So the factorial is always more than the original number. Okay, so what we need to do is to look at all decompositions of x, y, and z such that uh, the length of x, y is at most p and the length of y is at least one. Well, here it's not really as important because the string is all zeros. So therefore, we don't really care about what the actual decomposition is. Um, we're just adding some or subtracting some number of zeros into the string. We don't care about the actual string, but let's write it down anyway. So X is going to be some number of zeros since the whole string is zeros. I'm just going to call this alpha. Uh, y is going to be some number of zeros. Let's call it beta. So beta is at least one, let's say. Well, actually, that's a rule. <laughs> In fact, it's a rule over here. Um, and then we have, well, what's the rest of the string? It's P factorial minus alpha minus beta. And so what we want to do is we want to choose an I such that X, Y to the I, Z is not in the language, okay? Um, and the reason is that we want to arrive at a string that's not in the language from a string that we had because that would contradict the for all statement in the pumping lemma. So uh, let's compute what that is. So that's going to be um, x, y to the i, z, which is going to be 0 to the p oops, factorial plus i minus 1 times beta. And the reason for that is the alphas will cancel. I'm going to get an i alpha, uh, sorry, i beta out of this and a subtract 1 beta out of this. So that's what we get here. So therefore, this string is in L. Oops, jumped the gun. So this thing is in L if and only if P factorial plus I minus one beta is a factorial of some number. Okay, well, let's see. So if I, let's just pick I equal to two just to see. It'll turn out to work, but let's see. Let's choose I equal to two then that's effectively saying p factorial plus a single beta is a factorial. Well, we know that beta is at least one, so it's not equal to that factorial right there. So let's, let's write that down. So p factorial is strictly less than p factorial plus beta because beta is at least one. So let's write that guy down. So that's because beta is at least one. It turns out to be uh, at most p factorial plus p. And 
and, and you may say, okay, where did that come from? Beta is at, at most P. Well, the condition of X, Y's length being at most P way up there on the right, um, that s effectively says that the length of Y is at most P because X can't subtract anything out of it, out of a length. So um, that's at most of that. Well, what is the next factorial? So that's going to be, that's going to be, P plus one whole thing factorial, which is equal to P times, oh, oops, my mistake. That's P factorial times P plus one. That's just what it's defined to be. So if it's the case that uh, this thing is strictly less than this, then we're done. Well, let's see. Well, we can actually kind of see this because adding P versus multiplying by p plus 1 is um, it has this clearly going to be way bigger than just adding this. So it's adding a small number compared to the factorial times, uh, compared to timesing it by something else, even bigger than it. So multiplying by a bigger guy versus adding itself, it means that uh, this thing is way, way less than that. So these two are consecutive factorial numbers, whereas, uh, and it's strictly in between them. So this, sorry, this length right here cannot possibly be a factorial because it's consecutive, between con two consecutive factorial numbers, and it's not equal to any one of them. So therefore, this factorial, uh, this length, whatever it is, is not a factorial. And so therefore, this language is not regular because if it were, we would always arrive at a factorial number, but we showed that if you choose the right value of i, in this case two, you can show that you will not, um, you will not arrive at a factorial number. It's very similar to perfect powers of two and perfect squares. And try to see if you can generalize this to some arbitrary function up here. What is, has to be true about this function in order for it to be not regular? It turns out to be a very nice answer. So this language is not regular.